Welcome back, welcome back to yet another episode of the Talkative Sports Podcast. Man, we've been gone, it's been a short time, but dang, I missed y'all, man. How you been? How's how's the summer treating y'all? It's felt like the longest time, but in reality, it's only been about two months, so I'm I'm ready to get back in, you know, season two. Let's go. Yeah. Okay. We're okay. back. Kick off with a bang. All right. All right. I like the excitement. I like the excitement. I mean, you know, uh, this summer has been a lot, made for a lot of movement. Um, there's been a lot of activity. Yeah. You know, Women's World Cup is going off, popping off. I mean, Gold Cup. Some things I have to discuss about that, but we'll get to that later. Uh, but I guess there's only one place to start off, right? It's the preseason. Um, that means we're in the midst of the summer transfer window, um, and a lot has happened, specifically with some of our favorite teams here. So I just got to ask, what is your what do you uh, what's your best surprise of the preseason, and why? Start well, off nice and simple. I mean, um, as we all know, um, this Premier League preseason season has been quite. The preseason so far, but I'd say my best surprise would have to be, you already know, my team, Chelsea, you know, nine goals in two games. Um, It's just two games, and it's preseason, but um, I'm pretty sure, man, you lost to Wrexham, 3-1. Yeah, last night. So. But they didn't care about that game. Right, but, but still, that's... That's a team, you know. It's not like we can say Wrexham. Oh, they, they, they're, 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 they're less than scrubs. So that's fair. And we both plays our kids. Right. Exactly. Five zero clean sheet against Wrexham, and then against. Hold on, hold on. Mm-hmm. You said you both played their kids, your kids, Shakes. All you got is kids. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. <laughs> Good point. Good point. Good point. Good point. We, we, that, 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 that goes to our point, though. We don't. All we have is kids. They have seasoned Agreed. vets in that team. Agreed. And, Plus um, Mason Mount, and they lost three one. Yeah. Um. So this, it seems like Wrexham isn't that bad, but we were able to handle our business. I mean, my God, five zero, and a and a clean sheet, and then um we won against Brighton. It was four three, and. Guys like Mikhailo Modric finally got on the score sheet. I mean, I, like that. Just to see how like the entire team reacted when he scored, it was so great. And then I Nicole, mean, that goal was crazy, though. Yeah, it yeah. Was it? The whole setup. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like the he, he skipped it over the defender's leg. Should Nicholas Daxon, who skipped it back, and he just volleyed it first time. Out. <laughs> Zero hesitation. Zero just hesitation. Boom, like, boom. Yeah, the confidence. One was touches there, like, all the way. Absolutely. And so, yeah, and then Nicholas Jackson and Kunku coming on and s- scoring. So, yeah, it was. Um, it would have to be Chelsea for, for me because we okay. most scoring tally. I mean, at least it's looking like it. So, yeah. Okay. I mean, it's been a while since Chelsea has seen some, some love <laughs> and good tidings. So, let's keep the bandwagon going. Go ahead, Shay, I know what you're about to say. <laughs> um, well... My my favorite thing, like going off what Zach said, is definitely Nicholas Jackson. He's my, I, I wouldn't say it was a surprise, but it was a bit of a surprise. Like watching him get, you know, his link up play and and scoring is it, it's just a breath of fresh air, which brings me to my favorite surprise is well, not really a surprise, but Mason Mount and Kai Havertz thinking it up for their <laughs> respective new teams is definitely my favorite part of preseason so far. Well, you, you know, like for Mason Mount and Havertz to Nkunku at Jackson, it, it, it's beautiful. I hope it continues all season long. I hope the Arsenal fans who were like you, you, you know, you know it's a problem when you sign a player for what seventy five mil, and all you see is just defense, defense. Like they're already defending him, they're already debating, they're already going back and forth. That's never a good sign. But from the Chelsea side, 
we 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 eating good. Like we we're enjoying every minute of the Arsenal debate. Mason Mount, I feel like Mason Mount will still eventually come good once he figures out his partnership with Bruno Fernandez. I think he will definitely. It still kind of stings a little bit, especially when seeing how they're talking about selling uh, uh like his successor uh, uh Gallagher in the same way, kind of Gallagher. It's like if we lose him too, then that would kind of hurt. But it's like you know, because so you read Gallagher. I read Gallagher. I've always read Gallagher. Like, on his loan, he was good. Like, he was one of the only guys during that end of the season. His loan to Crystal Palace, he was amazing. He looked like De Jong from Barcelona. Just yeah, they, they, they wanted to sign him and yeah. said no for a good reason. Amazing. So the only, and he, he still, like, during the end, he's one of the only guys that I saw that would, like, put in, literally the only one. Like, in that Brighton game, too. He showed me something, a different part of his game that I hadn't seen ever in the Chelsea shirt. Like and we 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 play him in defensive midfield, but he's he's getting up there like he's so trying cool. Lampard, you know. So yeah. it's like if Mason Mount could not succeed Lampard, and he wanted to go for whatever reason, unfortunately, we have somebody who's who looks even more motivated in in Conor Gallagher. So I I really hope the. The news I'm seeing of us willing to sell him for fifty million is it true? Because that's another gem that we would lose to, to to a West Ham or Fulham, and it just doesn't make sense to sell him. Because at the end of the day, he, he, like he's already one of the most senior players in the team. Actually, yeah. if we want to take it back to the academy, he's our longest one of. Apart from Reese James, he's yeah. top five longest serving Chelsea players. He's been at Chelsea since what eight six. So yeah. I really don't want to lose him because you know, like he's, he's showing down. levels that even Mason Mount wasn't showing when he started getting yeah. started in the team. And of okay. course, we got Mukunku and Jackson over there doing their thing and scoring goals. And not just it's not just the goals they score; it's the confidence they're showing. And the link up play and the understanding with their teammates, that's really exciting me for the rest of the season. And you know, I, I love to hate. I wake up extra early to hate. So <laughs> seeing Mount and Havertz draw blanks, it just it just fills up my heart. So Yeah. You know what's crazy? I don't know if that if that says more about you as just a Chelsea fan or you as a person, in the sense that you're loyal to your club. <laughs> <laughs> or you as a person, the hypocrisy. Because at this time last year, when I was calling Havats out, putting him out on blast. Hey, 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 wait, 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 wait. Was I not the first person to put Kai Havertz on fraud watch? My my guy, you were jumping back and forth. You would think you were playing double dutch. Stop it. <laughs> uh, but at the end of the day, I was the first. I knew he was fraudulent from the beginning. I was hopeful. When I, when I went to the other oh, side, yeah. it was more me like, okay, he has potential, but at the, I, I, I always said at the end, like, he has massive amounts of potential, but he just has not showed it in his last, what, how many years has he been? Two, three, two and a half, three. He just hasn't showed it, apart from that Champions League final goal in his first mm -hmm. season. But after that, it's just been downhill from there. And I was hoping, but... Thankfully, Poch is like, yeah, we don't want to deal with this guy anymore. And Arsenal offered an amazing amount of money for him. And I, like, there's no reason to say no to that. No reason to say no. Especially, like, just clean break. Get Nkunku in. Get Jackson in. We might get one more striker. It just made the most sense to let him go. And now it's Arsenal's problem to draw his full potential. I will never understand where Arsenal oh, saw that amount of money worth being spent I mean, on Kai Havertz, but if, that's a know, conversation. You know, I, I, if, I, 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 if, if, if what Arteta's planning works, where he wants, um, he wants Kai Havertz and um, Odegaard like as like to be kind of like entertain, interchangeable and tens and nines. That, that could sense. work, but I don't, I don't think, I don't if think the partnership I don't, I don't is going to be. Out, I don't think it'll quite work out for Kai. I don't know, though. It's possible, but I don't know. Yeah, if, if the partnership is going to be Kai and Odegaard, it, it, it's not going to work. Kai 
works best as a false nine playing with a real out and out striker. And yes, look, good out and out striker. striker. Yeah. They, yeah. they simply do not. So he's once again in no, no man's land. Well, and the funniest part is Arsenal have a striker I rate really, really high. Yeah. I rate him so yeah. high. They also they have Balari. I rate him really high, man. They have Balari. I mean, I, I I'll give you that Nketiah is a good player, but he did have the opportunity while Jesus was gone to really, you know. He wasn't ready to take it. He did take it. He scored a yeah. bunch of goals while Jesus was gone. Yeah. Well, of course they're going to start Jesus. They should yeah. start Falarin. They have Falarin by Logan too. Like, why not start Falarin? The points, the points that all I'm saying is, all I'm saying is the critical points that they dropped, you know. Oh, they were missing Jesus, you know. And then when Jesus came, they were already walking on a tightrope because yeah. they had like one or two games to, to they had to literally go perfect by the time Jesus it's came back. It's not so, because of Jesus they they dropped those points. It's because Absolutely. of the lack of of confidence and a inferiority Absolutely. complex, and they were just not ready mentally to do what it takes to beat Man City. And I don't blame them for that. Like. I should have seen the light. I was their biggest supporter because I just hate Man City that much. My yeah, hate yeah. was blinding me to, to the they reality of the situation. Never doubted that Arsenal would fall. You're right. I'll give you. I'll give you that. I'll give you he, that. He 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 had that even more than you, Marcus. But me, I'm like, I I, whatsoever. If if I have a if I have a, a bit, uh, like a decision between hating on Man City and facing reality, it's always going to be hate on Man City. So, I can, I'll tell you guys something as a Manchester City fan, right? Mm -hmm. After after the debacle in that Champions League uh, quarterfinal against Tottenham, mm -hmm. I think, listen, <laughs> even if there's a 1% chance of us losing, <laughs> it's enough to, to have me shiver. Because <laughs> no, yeah. admit, no yeah. admit City, uh, sure. no admit Pep, Pep will do something with the lineup to make that 1% suddenly turn into 45-50. But this but, time, he had his lineup way he, he had that what was that he, is, it, is it a two three, two, three, seven, two, three one that he seven, had this, the, so only, I would, the, <laughs> yeah. the only thing i would say he made a mistake on was not starting kyle walker in my opinion because kyle walker had just put the clamps on on uh he's, he's, he's junior yeah in the, in, in the is he going to burn what is it is he going to that's still up in the air, bro. We don't know. We don't know. Are y'all um, Sorry, I'm huh? not. Oh, hey, hey man. Yeah, it is what it is. All right, let me, let me, let me, get, let me get my two cents before we move on to the next segment. Um, <laughs> honorable mention for me has to be Ashton Villa. Bro, what they are doing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Musa yeah. Diaby. Yes. With the signings that they're doing. Yo, Ashton Villa is going to be a tough out this season. Amber is cooking. Tough out this season. Home and away. They're going to be a tough, they're going to be a tough out this season. He's cooking. Um, but my actual, actual biggest surprise, and it's going to feel like this is uh, a, a Chelsea fan club podcast episode, but uh, I have to give it to y'all, man. Uh, listen, hey, wait, 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 wait now, wait, wait now, wait now, wait, wait now, wait now. I'm not going to give it to the entire club. I'm only giving it to one player. Ooh, bro. Nicholas Jackson. Yes, yes, yes. That dude, when I've seen him play, He's for real. The way he's able to drop into the midfield and link up play. Dribble the ball, take off. Dribble play. the ball, get his I'm teammates. Sorry, Mr. Jackson. When I tell and you, when I tell you, the guy for reminds real. me, when I tell you the guy reminds me like I'm watching a healthy Aguero. Ooh. You're it not was, it, it You're was not. crazy. No, especially, Rocky. especially in the goal that Mudrick, in that Mudrick goal. All I saw, all I was reminisced of was David Silva and Aguero connection, bro. That's yeah. all I saw in that goal. I'm just like, if he, Poch does his thing, you guys might have something there. You guys might have something there. I mean, I, I feel like Poch is cooking something. Preseason wins don't really matter, but... I mean, as long as I, feel, right. I, I, I can see, I can see what he's trying to do. I know we've been in debate about signings and who should sign between me and Zach, but I know I, I can see, I can, I, and I can appreciate what he's cooking with this very young team. We're gonna be the I youngest. Like, oh, for the first time since like three, 
three, four years. I like all of our signings. I mean, I yeah. hope I mentioned that all of our signings I approve of. It's just my only thing is now when you have kids, they need to learn how to lose. They need to learn how to win and keep winning. There's different things that they need to learn. They can't learn on their own and they need a teacher out there on the field, which is why my only thing is one, two veterans that actually start on the pitch. So they, so they have a, a, they have a standard and a benchmark to, 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 to try to reach, you know, it, 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 to raise the levels of the whole squad. Last word. Yeah. 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 You know, I, I agree with that. I agree with that, but you know, I, I'm, I'm willing to go. I'm willing to start the season with just these kids. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, I think you guys are building something good as far as preseason goes, from what I'm seeing. And uh, while we're on the topic of preseason, you know, this is a special, I guess, special event we can call it. I mean, I'm not sure if they've done a big preseason tournament in the U.S. before the Premier League, as that is, or as or one that was as big as this one, but. I, I don't know about you guys, but I'm liking the games that I'm seeing, even though, you know, they're not really too serious, but I'm, I'm liking being able to see all these kids that I have no, I know nothing about getting to see them, you know, go out and get some run. Now, my question that I'm getting to here, I want to preface with this. Um, it may just be me, but I feel like there's really no rhyme or reason to uh, when clubs, you know, set up their preseason friendlies and tournaments and whatnot. Do you think it would be a good idea for the Premier League to make this U.S. Summer Premier League series one thing that just happens every year, preseason? It doesn't have to be the same teams, but maybe they do a thing like, you know, it cycles through all, all, you know, all the teams that end up in the Premier League, including the ones that just get relegated, because this could be a good way to, you know, for them to get some good fans as well. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, because this is something Todd Bowley proposed before Chelsea kicked the match preseason tournament, and the Phil Nevels and the the Gary Nevels and who is who's the the Scouts dude on on CBS? Like, oh my God, American owner doesn't know what he's talking about, but yet it makes sense. Like we already have a PL series where Premier League teams are competing for a preseason trophy. Why not bring all the other teams in that are interested? Like, this is, like, literally the best way for Premier League teams to prepare for the season is by playing other Premier League teams. Now, they can have their other, their old, like, if they don't want to go to the USA or, or Europe or Asia, wherever it's it, it's like based man, in. Mr. Bougie champions. But go on. They, they, they can still go play their other games after, but it's, like, for teams who... Wanna even like it would be even better if it's based in England. Like they don't even have to travel that much. But I know preseason is more about marketing and reaching other fans, so they have mm-hmm. to go to other markets. But still, like a preseason tournament is in the best interest of the Premier League, especially when it's Premier League teams. Like we can invite other leagues to it. We can invite Inter and Juve and Bayern and Lyon and PSG and even Saudi Arabian teams. But it's like it's it will be such a dope idea because it's the Premier League's it's a Premier League's preseason, and we're preparing Premier League teams to play in the Premier League, and also by inviting other teams into it, that it prepares them for Europe too at the same time. So it's like why not? It's not. It makes sense, like, but it's like when it comes from an American mouthpiece that, oh, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. So it's like this, like, I could definitely see Tabuli's vision, especially now this season, now that he's gotten all his pieces into place and he's letting us cook. It's like he he never claimed to be an expert. He's just shooting out his ideas. And some of those ideas are actually good. And they shouldn't have just been dismissed as, oh, American who, who calls football soccer. Like, no. He, he's, <laughs> he's a kid to win. So it's like, yeah, the PL series will keep getting bigger. And honestly, it's all going to depend about money, how much money this this thing makes. I think we have uh, Chelsea, Brighton, Fulham, Newcastle, Brentford in it. So, like, all of those are big established Premier League teams, and they're always going to draw crowds in the USA. 
always. So it's like, and we started it off with a four three, and then I think uh, the second game I think was like Fulham and uh, it was Fulham and Brentford, and it was Fulham three, Brentford two. Like that's all the tickets sold out. Thing. All the tickets were sold out, right? I don't. I I, I did not see their ticket sales personally. I, I can't yeah, confirm yeah. that. Mm. But yeah. I would like to I'd think be honest, bro, most of the stadium was full, uh, at least the Chelsea game. Taking it to um, open it up to other teams in Europe. I think I think just keeping it to the Premier League for right now may be a good idea, especially since the Premier League already has such a good standing in the U.S. I mean, if we were going to open it up, I guess maybe to Bundesliga and La Liga since you can get those um pretty easily in the u.s due to espn plus outside of that i don't know i would think but, that the premier league should establish their own like it's already called a premier league summer series so and it's already premier league teams next see when when they look at the stats and the financials they can expand and if expansion means more Premier League teams or if, if other uh, leagues want to join, then go there. But it should always be a Premier League summer summer series where we invite other leagues to join in if they, they want. Fair enough. Uh, Zach, what say you? Last word. No, yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm going to add, that's it. To the sport and more money. Oh, fair, fair play, fair play. All right. Um, and that takes us to the last topic of the day. And the biggest event that's going on right now, the Women's World Cup. So, what I want from you guys is one thing you like the most and one thing you like the least about the Women's World Cup so far. And, you know, I'll go first. Um, So, let me preface what I'm about to say is with this, I'm very, 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 very biased. But the one thing I like the most about the Women's World Cup is to see my... Haitian females out there hey. playing with all their heart. There you doing go. It, doing <laughs> it big. You know, I don't think they've gotten a I don't think they've gotten a dub yet, but they're playing with heart. They're playing with heart. They're playing with heart. Well, playing heart. Really very well. Yeah, yeah, very well, very well. Very well. I mean okay. a lot better than the men is what I can say. And we oh. lost him. Oh. It's okay. <laughs> we'll finish it off. He'll join us back at some point. But um but yeah, a lot better than the men. I mean <laughs> yeah, we still haven't made a World Cup, man. I'm still waiting for that on the men's side. Now, for the thing that I hate the most about the Women's World Cup, and this might just be the group stage, but I feel like all the matches are happening at ungodly hours. Like, I'm talking about kickoffs at 2, 3, 3 a.m. Like, And I understand, you know, it's happening in Australia and New Zealand, New Zealand but... Jeez, the timing couldn't have been a little bit better. Yeah, it's but that's all I got on my side. What well, you yeah. got for me? Absolutely. Um, to 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 kind of um help on your your point about the kickoff times. Like, I mean, I was watching this morning. I think I woke up at like six a.m., six thirty, and I was just flipping through channels, and then I got to Fox FS1, and then I thought they were playing a game like from like yesterday. Like, wait, this is live. Like the Ireland game. Ireland, Canada. By the way, shout out Canada women. Boys, Canada, look at what the women are doing. They scored one more goal than you did all work up. That's good. Um, yeah, really. It's Canada's men's team scored one goal a whole World Cup. <laughs> yeah, anyways. Um, no, yeah, absolutely. Those times, like, who's waking up at 6.30 a.m. to watch the game? <laughs> I mean, to be fair, you know, during the during the men's World Cup, games were starting that early, but that's not that's not bad. They were just starting. I feel like I feel like now with the women's World Cup at six thirty, games are if not if it's not just ending, it's it's already in the second half. Like you, they have games that start at like one in the morning and three thirty yeah. for us over here. Like it's impossible. But I've noticed something really fishy though. All the oh, yeah. US Women's national team games yeah. are during right. watch it or out. Get the kids so. around the TV. Order pizza, order yeah, pizza. like oh, I think oh, the game they played today <laughs> was like at 9 a.m., which is right. like the, the, the perfect time. Yeah. So it's they like, had a game today at 9? They have a game today at 9 p.m. 9 p.m. or 9 a.m.? 9 p.m. I thought it was 9 no, a.m. No, it's 9 p.m. against. 9 p.m., okay, that makes more sense. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um. Well, okay. one thing. Okay. So one thing I really like about this Women's World Cup is um, I I, I didn't really like get to like watch the U.S. like um, their, in their previous World Cups like closely, and I'm just happy that I get to like see how talented they are more closely. I mean, our both of our wingers are man. Like, they're bigger, stronger, and faster than everybody I've seen them play. <laughs> it's, it's like Dennis Rodman's daughter is just <laughs> pushing people left and right. <laughs> oh, man. And, um, yeah, we have an intelligent, incredibly talented squad. And Alex Morgan, she's like the female version of Lewandowski. I mean, nasty. She's still going strong at 34. Um, yeah, that's the one thing that I really appreciate, that I get to watch them. Up, up and close but the one thing that man I, I was like I almost got sick to my stomach when I saw this I was watching the England game there was a whole section of the stadium that was empty I'm not talking like one or two rows like here no it was like a whole section empty like five rows I was like what a World Cup, yeah, that 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 yeah, that was unbelievable. And it was. I wonder what time. I wonder what time local time. I mean, it, started. it it was a women's game though. But it's a, it's a it's women's. The, what does that mean? It's the World Cup, man. Yeah, facts. What does that mean? I mean, it, it just means that they don't sell enough ticket tickets compared to the men's game. Or they sell the tickets in a way where they fill entire sections all at once before going on to that. These are just theories well, I'm making I know. Up. But I'm, I, I'm just saying, it, w- it would never be an England game, or England men's possible. game in the World Cup that, that, that wouldn't be so. Even, even a men, a England men's game in the World Cup would be completely sold out. There would not I be mean, a ticket to spare. They would have to fight. Puerto Rico would be sold out. Respectfully. Re- yeah. Exactly. Respectfully to the women's game, I can understand that. Okay, they might not sell out the tickets for all the be paying people. At the end right. of the day, like it, it's right. probably very expensive for them to travel to New Zealand or Australia yeah. for the women's game, and it's like the women even support their own game. No. Oh, wow. So it's He's like not wrong. He is not wrong. Yeah, it's like yeah, it, they're not they're they're just not gonna sell out. I don't know why they they did it that way where it's an entire section, but I, my my working theory is they were selling out section by section, and they maybe they sh- they should have planned better to just keep that section off the TV. And, yeah, because yeah. definitely when the camera because that doesn't look good for turn, for the women's game when the cameras like turn. Like the the everywhere else was filled as far as like all the other sections of the stadium, but there was just this one section that when the cameras came. Hey, well, who were they playing? They were playing. I think they they beat down some team. Who uh, they they played? Uh, they beat them. Like maybe six. maybe maybe that was set for opposing fans. Yeah, maybe that was the opposing. It was set Ooh. for the opposing team section. I know. Didn't sell out that section. I mean, yeah, if, if it's especially if that opposing team is from somewhere, you know, far. Oh, sorry. It wasn't England. It was Germany. They beat the team like six zero. Germany against the um, what did Morocco. Yes. yes. Oh, never mind. Morocco has no excuse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, they they kind of do though, because like, do they have I mean, the women's team in Morocco, a Muslim country, have the support okay, to fly right, out to right. New Zealand or Australia to support the women's team in the world? I mean, if you said all right. The thing with well, that, if you said India or Pakistan or Afghanistan, if that's where the games were playing, maybe. <laughs> All right. Iraq, right? <laughs> Syria. All right, yeah, 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 yeah. I think, I, think, I think we're going down the path. We don't need to go down now. But no, yeah. I, I'm just saying that as Australia and New Zealand are actually one of like the easiest countries to travel to on the planet. Really? I mean, they have, they have their stadiums. Yeah. But it's like if it's Morocco, I can understand why, because they like gotta, they know they're gonna get. They gotta keep that. Do they have an, a loyal I enough following to fill their seats? <laughs> they lost six. Yeah. Like they like if you know Nigeria is playing well, 
if I know Nigeria, my team is not that good, but we are. But if or we weren't that good and it's a women's team and I know they're playing against the, the, one of the highest, top three highest ranked teams in the world, I'm not Where? paying how many thousands of dollars to go watch them do 6-0. Fair enough. You, you're not, you, 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 you honestly, watch like, honestly, if Haiti yeah. got, if Haiti got pulled up against uh, Argentina or a team like that, I probably wouldn't you're not going pay to watch that either. I, I, I definitely watch yeah, it. Yeah, it's like, it, it's, it's, it would be it's like, anymore. I'll save, I'll save, I'll save that money for the men's World Cup. Sheesh. <laughs> I, I guess that's a great place to leave I it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Thank you guys for, for joining real. us on this episode. Uh, oh, man, it's good to be back. It's good to be back. We'll catch you guys next week. And as always, like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends, all that good stuff. Catch you the next time. Peace. <laughs>